Hey, Sean Jantz here. I'm going to do a quick trade plan for Friday, October 2nd, and I'm going to do it on slash ES, which is the S&P 500 and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And before I get into this trade plan, I have said this every single Thursday night for the last uh, six plus years. You need to understand that Friday is an extremely, extremely mental and psychological trading day. And what I mean by that is that if you do something stupid on a Friday, you trade too long, you trade too big, you don't stick to your plan, you revenge trade, you lose stupid money on a Friday, you then have two days to think and sulk over your losses. And if you've been doing this for any amount of time, you've quickly realized that this game's roughly 70 to 80% mental and behavior and attitude. And you can't do that to yourself uh, mentally, you know, because in your sulking Saturday, Sunday, you've ruined your Monday morning, and it's just really hard to get over that hump. And so I always tell people, take Friday light. Um, I still see opportunity, but my favorite question, my favorite quote on Friday is, when in doubt, stay the hell out. So ne- always remember that, put plaster that uh, on your desktop with a sticky note so that you remember. And so a little bit of a recap for the week. If we look at slash ES, right, all the market does is cycle. And so obviously all time high, cycle down, oversold, oversold, cycle up, cycle up, right? And so clearly the market definitely has plenty of room to continue cycling on the daily chart. But for the most part, we're pretty much sitting right here at equilibrium. I would definitely say we're more overbought than oversold, especially if you look at like a, you, you dial down into a four hour chart. You can see how that's kind of at the top uh, of the overbought, oversold range. And so it's kind of conflicting, right? The daily chart has more room to go. The four-hour chart, once the cycle down, can make it a little difficult to know which, you know, which eagle view or bird's eye view, which one's going to win, right? But not necessarily our job to predict that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play the game. What if this market goes higher? What if it goes lower? And uh, make my move from there. So if it goes higher, we do. We are going to have plus 0.5 as first level of supply and just a little bit higher. I'm honestly not totally against plus one. Obviously, that would be a new two-week high getting up into there. No structure, but I'm not against looking for change control there or there. And then to the downside... You know, knowing that that four-hour chart does kind of want to cycle lower, this could be a really good potential target. I wouldn't sell just yet. You'd want to wait to get through at least, you know, Thursday's POC, find pullback, pullback, and then lock and trail into that POC cluster and the negative 0.5. Lots of volume right here. And so you can use that to your advantage knowing price will likely want to get sucked into there. And then, uh, you know, this would qualify for first demand. I'm going to hold off looking for a buy trigger there, but it's decent. If I were to buy tomorrow, I'd want to be pulling back into the negative one or even into that negative one and a half and or the negative two. NQ really surged. And if we go to the bird's eye view on NQ, I kind of want to show this to you. It's definitely kind of getting overbought. It's actually hitting a monthly high here, really bouncing off of its lows. So if it continues to go higher, it's definitely going to get even more uh, overbought. There will be a little bit of supply right into there. And so... Just understand that there's no two-week, at least no structure for the last 30 days on these deviations. But if you want to look for sell triggers, you can. Just got to make sure you're seeing good change control. To the downside, this would be a nice little target, negative 0.5, Thursday's POC. You get through Friday and hold pullback. That's a nice target. And then if you want to like a lot of profit, and if this sucker moves tomorrow, there's a huge target right there. Wednesday, Tuesday, I don't know if we'll have enough juice, but if the bears want to dump, that's an awesome place to potentially lock and trail and be a huge, huge profit um, potential. So you can see how you can use those cycles. We know it wants to cycle lower. That doesn't mean that it will, but we know it wants to. And then we can find these targets. We just got to wait for strength and pullbacks. YM might be the best chart for tomorrow. It's got really clean structure on the deviations to the upside. Negative 0.5 is not perfect, but there is structure there and structure. And then you got the negative one and a half and or the negative two. RTY, good structure to the upside on both deviations. And then this one has the best opportunity, in my opinion, for 80% roll. Where you got it. The only thing that could hiccup, right, is you got two POCs right there, which could cause, you know, possibly support, who knows, but there's volume there. So you don't know how price is going to react if it gets there. It could do something like that, right? So just be mindful. Uh, But if it starts breaking, decent opportunity for 80% roll. You know, you got the big round number 1500 right there. But, um, you know, if I were to buy, I'd want to be pulling back into the negative one and or the negative one and a half. So don't forget, we also have deviations 
on the three major Forex pairs. You can see that right here. And then we also have deviations in value area on gold futures and crude oil futures as well. So make sure that you're taking pictures of all of your trades and use the four-step trading process and use and post the bird's eye view, the worm's eye view, and the trade stamp in the BTG Trader Tribe so that you can get feedback from me and from others.